into the sanctuary on this wonderful Sunday in August. How blessed we are to be here together in this wonderful place, Redondo Beach, which is paradise compared to many of the places we could be. And we're grateful for that. And we come together at this time. We're all fanning ourselves. Is there any air on in the room? It's the energy. It's hot stuff. Hot stuff. Summertime, and the spirit is moving. Grace is jumping, and the energy's high. Oh, my life is good, and it's getting better. So hush, little ego, don't you try. <laughs> I either have gone crazy or my humility, my humility is deepening because they all say to me, my friends who are close to me don't sing in public, but I defy the odds. <laughs> Sorry about that, kids, but there you have it. You never know. <laughs> so today, my dear ones, we are showing up here to be open and receptive to understanding ourselves in a deeper aspect of what this thing called compassion is. And, you know, we know what compassion is, or we think we know what compassion is. It's a word we're very familiar with, and we use it a lot. But today, you and I, because we are truth students, and we have committed ourselves to a spiritual life unfolding at a deeper level with every breath, and with every new day, and with every new endeavor, we want to really get on the inside of it a bit more deeply and a bit more fully. So if you go to confe com confession... <laughs> What is going on here today? <laughs> I confess, I confess that I am indeed committed to being a truth student. And I do want my life to unfold spiritually. Yes, I do. And I cannot do it on my own. I need the company of others who are on the same course and the same trajectory. So when we go and look in the dictionary and we see the definition of compassion, it says beautiful things like benevolence, and it says things like heart, and it says things like grace, and it says things like love, and things like care and fellowship. And it says softness and tenderness, and all those kinds of beautiful things that you can look up for yourself and see more of. Do it. It's always fun. So what is it going to be, though, for you and for me? Well, for truth students, we get on a deeper um, end of that, and we want to dive in a little bit more um, fearlessly and uh, review the bottom of all of that conscious state and come up with a deeper sense of a unified state of being. Because there's no way you and I are going to live as compassionate hearts if, first and foremostly, we haven't got a sense of what it is to be unified, to be as one, to be in harmony, to be unified. And the way that happens is to first acknowledge that with our source, that state of being, with our source. And what does that really mean? Get engaged with your source. Are we going, all right, I'm getting engaged with source now. Go to some holy temple, shrine, or wherever. Look up or do the usual thing. No. It's saying engage with your higher self. Get to know your higher self. That's what it means. Get to recognize your higher self, your true essence. That's what getting in touch with source means because the source of all being is within you as the source of your being. And that's what it means. So you have to now take on this commitment to entering in and engaging with the true essence of yourself, the true essence of yourself, to be at home with it, to be comfortable in it, to be able to be there like that in any given circumstance, situation, and so on. And for that to happen, of course, you and I must be integrated enough in a way that we no longer are in self-doubt, that we are no longer seeing ourselves as um, 
broken in any way, needing fixing in any way, and needing mending in any way, that there's something missing in us somehow. We have to get over all of that and get to the point where we are as we were in our incipiency. We are this whole amazing universal life force, uh, the essence and the very energy of the creative force itself. That's the true essence of our being. And anything we may have learned on, in our human experience or in our e evolutionary experience, to the contrary of that, is false, is not true, is a lie. So we need to pull ourselves back from that lie and that untruth and start, yes, even in spite of where we think we are right now with all our faults and failings and this and that and the other and all the have-nots and so on and maybe and later and all of that. We have to start right here and right now because it doesn't take any time, effort or energy to think differently. It can be done right here, it can be done right now. And that's what we have to do if you and I want to show up as the compassionate heart. And if ever a world needed a compassionate heart, don't you think it is now? I know it's always the best of times and the worst of times, but guess what? We're in these times. And in these times, you and I are called. It's an acute state that we're in right now. We are called to be the true essence of our being. That's what we're called to be. That's why you're in this place. If you were... Elsewhere, this may not be so, but you're here. And because you're here, I know you're called to be the pulse and to have your finger on the pulse of life and the vanguard and the front line of what is needed now to turn things around and to raise, raise up that mighty power and energy of life and light and love and peace and beauty and power and wisdom and knowledge and understanding and grace and all that is of good, all that is godly. You wouldn't be here if that wasn't so. So whether you know it or not, you're called, that's it. Like it or lump it, you're called, you're the ones and that's that. You signed off for it, you're here, and now you have to do it. And so have I. And so to do that, we need to really and truly get, once and for all, we are interconnected. There's no separation in God. There's no separation in life. So there's no separation in us in life as we know it on this planet as human beings on Earth. There is no separation. We are interconnected. I am everything and everyone, and you are everything and everyone, and I will say it until I'm blue in the face, and until I get it and you get it. I'm everything and everyone and everything and everyone is me. Every face I look into, I'm looking into the mirror of myself, like it or lump it. Every face I look into, I'm looking into the mirror of myself and myself is looking back at me. Now, if I'm unified, as our prayer unified us, then what I will see looking back at me is this power and this presence and this light and this essence of spirit. And I will know that's what I am the mirror reflection of as I'm looking into the mirror. And that's what you're called for now. There's no messing around anymore. No, you know, kindergarten stuff. It's done. Here we are. We're ready to graduate and go out into the world. Remember what that was like? Even though we were very excited, there was part of us that was a little scared too when we got to that point. We had to be out in the big world taking care of ourselves. Ooh. That was the other side of, I'm free, I'm out of it. Uh, yeah, nobody to tell me what to do, etc. So what is it going to be? Because you and I can, I can stand here, you can sit there, and you can let things happen the way it's always been happening, and every day the same day, and the same old, and whatever else, and so forth, and going through the motions and the machinations of it all, and wanting a peaceful and a quiet life. Everybody wants a peaceful and quiet. Let me tell you, if you take your spiritual life seriously, you won't have a minute's peace. You won't have a minute's peace, because your truth and your essence will not let you settle for less. Will not let you settle for less than you can be. That's the way of it, so get used to it. But you'll be comfortable in your lack of peace 
and you know everything going rosily and if it doesn't I extrapolate myself from it oh no they don't make me feel good so I don't have anything to do with them and that doesn't make me feel good so I won't get over there anymore and really the only place I feel good is in my safe little garden corner here and I'll stay in the safe little nest and that is it and that's an option and there's not a thing wrong with it not a thing wrong with that but if you want to get into the deeper end of the spiritual waters of life, it's unsettling, it's disturbing, and it will demand your attention all of the time, just as that cobweb just caught mine. Hi, Charlotte. <laughs> Hi, Charlotte. You see? And on this plane, there's always something there to remind, oh, well, anyway, I could, <laughs> it's a singing morning. There's always something there to catch our attention, to remind us of the true reason why we're here, or to distract us from the true reason why we are here, but always something there to remind us either way. So what is it going to be? What is it going to be? My gosh, this could be the best month you've ever had in your entire life because you could take yourself on, which is the biggest challenge you could ever take on yourself. But oh my gosh, the reward is stunning. Doesn't mean you and I are not going to make mistakes. We're going to make mistakes. That's what we do on planet Earth. That's how we learn. That's how we grow. That's how we advance. We make mistakes. And for goodness sakes, let's have patience with each other when we do. Let's not pull away from each other just because we made a mistake. That's why we need to lean in more and support and assist and help. Help. Remember, all of us are midwives. We're all the time birthing new life, helping new life to be birthed one way or another in ourselves or in whatever. Compassion, compassion, compassion is the true server of the good. The true server of the good. Compassion, passion. When you look at them in the, in the dictionary, it's a very powerful, very energized and energetic word. So compassion means I am passionately open and available to show up and make the difference wherever I can make a difference. Mother Teresa's life is a wonderful example of compassion. Beautiful. Little did she think when she was sailing out, she had this idea, oh God, I've got to go to India. Oh sweet Jesus Lord, why do I have to go to India? But I have to go to India because I'm called to India. Small little soul thinking in our mind, I'm going and I will do the best that I can do. Can you imagine facing India to help the poorest of the poor? And she could well be thinking, there are so many poor people in India and I'm just a small insignificant person, yet it's my calling, yet it's the impulse and I will go where I am led and I am led by divine love and I will go, I will go and I will do what I can do. So she goes and she does what she does. And when she was interviewed once and asked, you know, Mother Teresa, did you ever think that you'd be going out and picking up thousands and thousands and thousands of sick and dying people? And she looked at the interviewer and she said, no, I wasn't thinking of thousands and thousands and thousands of sick and dying people. I was thinking of one. I was thinking, if I can just, if I can just take care of one, that will be amazing. And so I ever and only saw one sick or dying person. That's all I saw. Just one, one, one. And she mentions one three times. One, one, one. And that was enough. See, you and I learn a lot from the dear Mother Saint Teresa. She is now a saint. One thing at a time, one little thing at a time, one person at a time, one whatever at a time, just one. This week you and I are called to be that kind of compassion in the world, but it's not going to happen if you and I are still at the level of self-doubt, self-deprecation, low self-esteem, if we're still berating ourselves and telling ourselves we're not enough and what can I do? 
It's not going to happen. You and I can't be a compassionate heart from that kind of thinking and feeling and energy. We have to be humble enough, courageous enough to be humble enough to say in spite of all of that, I can make a difference. And I'm committed this week to making the difference in something, someone's life. And when some need crosses my path, I know I'm going to be equal to responding to it. Now that's the compassionate heart. And we don't have to, a king, a queen, a pauper can respond to a need equally, equally. I don't have to be in anything to respond to a need. I just have to be an open, compassionate, giving, loving heart. That's all. And why can I do that? And why am I equal to it? Because that's my nature. It's in my spiritual DNA. I know exactly how to do this. I've been programmed for it. I've just buried all of that for too long in the what I can't do and what I'm not and, and if I was that and if I was this and if I was her and if I was him, of course I could do it, but I'm not. I'm just me. And in the sweet tomorrow, it'll all work out. Well, it won't. There is no sweet tomorrow. There's only the power of today. And the power is in today. So the calling for you and the calling for me this week is real, 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 very real. For each and every one of us to show up as a pulse in the compassionate heart of life, as a beating pulse, a healthy pulse, a powerful pulse in the beating heart of life. That's what we're called to show up as this week. And it begins with ourselves, the compassion to be with myself in spite of all of my lumps and my bumps and my whatevers. I must first show that compassion to this humanity right here. And I must embrace this humanity right here just as it is right now. And that's enough. That's enough. So, do you know, as I asked this morning, do you know what you are destined? Do you know what you are destined to be? Do you think about what you're destined to be? Do you feel the call of what you're destined to be? Do you know that? If you don't, I'll tell you. I have the answer. Yes, this is one time when I can absolutely say I have the answer to that question. What are you destined to be? And the answer is, whatever you decide to be. That's the answer. Whatever you decide to be, you're that awesomely powerful. You can decide in anything. Whatever you decide to be. And the way that works out is if you honor, if I honor thinking, feeling, doing, speaking, listening, hearing, if I honor those abilities, if I honor those abilities by unifying them, which means what I'm thinking is the same as what I'm speaking. What I'm thinking and speaking is the same as what I'm feeling. What I'm thinking, speaking, and feeling shows up as the same in what I'm doing. I've unified the process. I'm not saying one thing and thinking another, etc. If I unify all of that, then I have a solid rock, a solid platform, a solid foundation from which to spring forth. That's how I can unleash my destiny. Remember, your destiny is whatever you decide and choose it to be. You get to choose, no one else. And that destiny can change all the time with the changing of your mind the changing of your thinking. And as you know, thinking is that which shapes lives and controls lives and produces lives. So the call is always to change your thinking. But as Raymond Charles Barker says, it's easy to change your mind. It's another thing to keep it changed. So we've got to change the mind, keep the mind changed, and be singular in our viewpoint and what we're looking ahead at. And remember, 
the finger that's pointing to the moon, <coughs> which will be your books and your seminars and all the teachers that cross your path and so on, the finger that points to the moon is pointing to the moon. Don't get stuck on the finger. <laughs> Go to the moon. The finger is nothing much at all. It's just a pointer, a signpost. The moon is the object of focus and concentration, not the finger, not the book, not the seminar, not the teacher, not the whatever. The thing itself. Why would you settle for less when you can experience the more? And that's what we're called to today. And each one of us in this room can be all of that, whatever you consider and conceive all of that to be. And so in this coming week, we will respond by first and foremostly coming into the awareness of that we're okay. We're okay. The compassion begins here. The compassion begins here. And then you come from your fullness and not your fumes. Remember, as I remind us all the time, people have their own fumes. They don't want you to share your fumes with them. They want you to come from your fullness. From your fullness. And the fullness is there already. The fullness is within. And we have more, more, more than enough to give from. To give from. Let me tell you, from being with people, having the honor of being with people, as they come to the end of their time on this plane, they've done their time and they're ready to go on to something bigger and better. They never think about all the things and all whatevers that they have achieved, all the things that they have received. They're always thinking about what they have given and could have given. And mostly about, I could have given more. That's what's on their mind. What's on their mind is what I had to give, what I did give, what I could have given, and always I could have given more. But of course we could give more. We're the fullness of life itself. We never run out of the moreness to give. So let's not wait till that point when we're thinking, oh gosh, I could have, should have, would have given more if only. Let's get out there and be all the giving that we can be in the world beginning with the givingness of compassion. And let's be impassioned by the desire within us to be that, to be that, to make the difference. Every single day of your life and mine, I should be able to put my head on the pillow and say, I did something today that made a difference in someone's life. And have somebody say to you every day, today you were my angel. Today, don't you know how good you feel when people say that to you? When people say that to you today, you were my angel. Or how good you feel when you turn to somebody and say, today, you were my angel. Thank you. So be out there in the world and just be your own sweet, beautiful, wonderful self. Because it is summertime. It is summertime, and it can always be summertime in our minds if we're open to the light and the energy therein. It can always be spirit time, and the energy can be easy and flooding and flowing and flying and taking care of our own needs and everybody else's needs because we're so abundant, we're so enriched, we're so empowered, and so it is.